And this film is an interesting kind of case study in the kind of run and gun, DIY, um, fastly produced, uh, quick pace kind of filmmaking style of Hong Kong that developed into other works like uh, John Woo's style. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Nick. I'm a director living in Taiwan and today I want to talk about the film Dangerous Encounters of the First Kind. This is a film that's directed by Tsui Hark. Tsui Hark is a very interesting director because he is considered the Spielberg of Hong Kong. And the reason he is is because later on in his career he went on to make uh, a lot of really big budget, very commercially successful films. He made a lot of films and he also produced many very successful commercial films. Probably the most famous of the films that he directed will be the Once Upon a Time in China series. But this film, Dangerous Encounters of the First Kind, is very different from the films that he would make later. His roots as a director began as a more DIY kind of punk rock type of film director that made uh, very shocking and almost uh, uh, socially impalatable films. His early films were not commercially successful and they were pretty gory and violent and you know you can see the low budgetness in the films that he's making. Uh, Dangerous Encounters, the film that we're talking about today in particular is very nihilistic, it's very punk rock. I saw another reviewer categorize it as a very angry movie and I think that's a really good way of putting it. You can see kind of uh, the anger of the director just seeping through and you can actually in my opinion see a real contempt for society so it's not surprising that his early films kind of weren't taken to by audiences because when I watch it I see him as a director that hates society at large and that therefore hates his audience <laughs> and he does so in kind of the violent and very kind of impalatable things that happen to the characters and you as a viewer are very uncomfortable with the people that you're watching. An interesting thing about this film is that there are two versions of it. The original cut of the film was banned by the government. So he recut the film uh, and cut out some kind of uh, political references and a lot of the violence so that it could be screened. Because it was banned, a lot of audiences therefore became curious and wanted to see it. So it's kind of an interesting commentary on how censorship doesn't really work, right? You want to ban this film, it's violent, it's political. Okay, he recuts it, takes out a little bit of it, and then now everybody wants to see it because they're like, ooh, I want to see this shocking movie. So I saw the banned version of the movie, and it's really interesting to watch this version because uh, the original cut of the film, all the parts of the film that were taken out, the film print was lost. Uh, they can't find it. So to recreate the banned version of the film, they had to use like the VHS master that he had. Uh, and so it's really low quality. You have like a kind of, you know, the film print parts of the film that were in the recut version. But then in the, when it goes back to the original parts that were taken out, it's this low five VHS quality. And so as you're watching it, it kind of cuts back and forth in quality and there's a very stark contrast of this real low quality kind of creepy it, it makes it in a way a little bit creepy and like you're watching something that you shouldn't be watching uh the quality is so bad and it also as a viewer it's kind of interesting because it really clearly points out oh this is the the thing that was cut so you know kind of like you're able to kind of analyze like okay what is the government worried about what are they what are they bothered by what sections of the film didn't they want you to see in this review i'll be talking about the band version because that's the only version i've seen i haven't seen the government safe recut so the film opens with a beautiful girl that's torturing mice and uh, just as a side note if you're watching this film there is some animal cruelty i imagine they're probably just really did do some bad things to animals uh, you know, I don't support that. I think most people don't support that. So that part of it is a little uncomfortable. If you don't like that sort of thing, don't see this movie. So the main character, Pearl, is this really angry, angry young woman who uh, takes out aggression and basically revenge on anybody who she feels like slights her. She opens the film, she pours all this ink on one of her coworkers who she doesn't like. She uh, basically violently attacks this guy who's hitting on her. She does all this violent stuff and you can just see the way the actress plays her, this just anger, violence and cruelty are her, her reactions to basically everything. Uh, the other characters in the film are adolescent boys. Uh, they commit a lot of pranks. An early prank in the film, they drop a paint balloon on an old lady. And their prank escalates into uh, putting a bomb in a movie theater. And they do it because they think it's going to be funny. They want to see what's going to happen. Um, so they put the bomb in the movie theater and it scares them. The, the thing scares them. They basically barely make it out. 
you know, they feel, oh man, this was too far. But Pearl saw them do it. And she follows them and blackmails them, telling them, if you don't hang out with me, I am going to tell the police. And so basically what she's found are people she can commit violence and terrorism with a, her sociopathic dream. She's found her accomplices and she's basically blackmailing them into continuing to commit violence with her. And she's a pretty girl too and they're young boys. And you can tell there's this weird sexual dynamic where they feel attracted to her, kind of feel like, oh, should I be in love with her? They're terrified of her and they are trying to devise ways to escape her weird blackmail scheme. Eventually, Pearl finds a bunch of money, which she steals. It's uh, money orders from Japan. So it's not cash, it's, a, it's, it's the promise of cash. And so the, follow, the rest of the film is the kind of incompetent and kind of buffoonish way that these young kids try to exchange this money order and then this gun smuggler guy is trying to find them to get it back. And then the film climaxes in this giant bloodbath where everybody, the, the smugglers, the police, these teenagers, they're all killing each other over this money that, that isn't even able to become money because uh, nobody ever finds a way that they can exchange it. They are killing each other over this stuff and it just ends with this real violent scene. And the final shot goes back to the original first prank that the boys did where they dropped the, water, the balloon of paint on the old woman. And there's intercut scenes of uh, riots in Hong Kong from the 60s. And so I think, for me, this final shot is the crux of the message of the film, what the film's trying to say. The film, for me, is about the breakdown of society and the kind of nihilistic way that violence seeps into the psyche of a society and a population and the way that people can be corrupted to commit all kinds of violence and terrorism. So this final shot, highlighting the prank, uh, it links the societal breakdown to these acts of mischief, you know, like how this mischief can morph and be utilized by a sociopathic leader, which would be Pearl, to kind of take these kind of uh, misguided, kind of no energy, no prospects, but, you know, also morally questionable young men and then mold them to do these kind of horrible things and take it from mischief to real you know, violence, terrorism, things that are real bad. And this ends up collapsing the entire society, which is, you know, the final scene, the final bloodbath. So you, you can see the coercion of, of Pearl. And, and I think there's a real parallel between the coercion of Pearl and the coercion of, you know, some sort of leader of, you know, some like a white supremacist group or an or a Al-Qaeda terrorist cell or some kind of thing like that where, you know, there's lots of reasons why somebody might latch on to somebody who's telling them to do these horrible things. But in the end, it's not really based in like a political ideology. It's just about causing trouble. That's how it starts. And, you know, there's a lot of other things that this film kind of touches on, which is like economic incentives. You know, they're doing this for money. There is, you know, they're poor. The, the characters in the film are poor. Like Pearl, interestingly, her older brother is this incompetent, idiotic police officer, but they're living in a crappy, like, crappy house together. And he, and so there's also that. There's this, like, corrupt government. He, you know, the police officer is looking out for this sociopathic girl that's his sister. He ends up trying to help her, even though she's doing all this awful stuff. So there's this nepotism, corruption. Um, and then you have the exploitive outside foreigners, the characters of these, like, money launderers coming in. And they're messing everything up as well. Interestingly, I saw one reviewer say that this film is like a call to riot against the hip hypocrisy of the modern world or something, something like this. And I couldn't disagree more, actually. I do not think this film is in any way, uh, although it is a punk rock film, you know, it's very like nihilistic and it's glorif- and it's, um, I should say it's criticizing society, definitely. I do not think in any way it is making a call to riot or glamorizing kind of the youth movements in, in, in ways that other kind of punk rock films try to. I honestly think this film is making almost exactly the opposite point, where it's an indictment of any kind of social, political uprising, uh, kind of rioting, all this kind of stuff. Um, and I think the real, the real evidence for this is the reprehensible kind of just gross nature of the main characters of the film. I mean, Pearl, 
is a sociopath and she's cruel and she's mean and there's nothing nice about her. And the boys that are following her are weak and useless and also mean in their own way. And they and these characters are always infighting with each other. They don't support each other. There's no camaraderie between them. There's no brotherhood, sisterhood, any of that. And their cause is meaningless. And the acts they're engaging in are really harmful. They're bombing things. They're hurting people. They're, they're, they're hurting people that are innocent. They're killing people. They're causing chaos. I mean, this is not like a glamorous depiction of social unrest or undermining the system or counterculture in any way. I mean, this is like miles apart from something like Fight Club, you know, where they're trying to make this kind of seem like a moral good or, you know, society is the ill and this is our reaction to it. I mean, this film is very clearly saying society caused these children. Yes, for sure. But what it caused is a malignant, disgusting tumor that we shouldn't be happy about. Society creates monsters and we're not going to be elevating these monsters to the point of being like martyrs or the, the result of this kind of capitalist uh, failing, you know, this kind of uh, petty corporate greed that Hong Kong was going through at the time is just a moral rot. And, then, and, and, and any kind of social political reaction to it isn't any better. It's just chaos, you know. So I would say this film is a warning about how riots and how social unrest and how the breakdown of society begins. It's not a call to riot. It's a warning of how these kind of things can slowly erode at your society. And without getting political in any way that is going to offend anybody who's watching this, I mean, I think if you look at some of the political unrest and uh, chaos that's happening around the world today, especially in America, you can... If you look at it in comparison to this film, you can see some interesting similarities. And in my opinion, I definitely see these parallels between how these kinds of um, social, this kind of social unrest begins, manifests, and uh, and ultimately, you know, the 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 way we should think about it. So in places like Kenosha or in, on January sixth, you know, this is, in my opinion, something that was born out of. Um, mischief and was exploited and if you watch this film with the particular events recent events around the world in mind it becomes very interesting and there's a little bit of kind of insight you can glean so i would say for me if you're going to watch this film think about it in that light and see kind of what you think because i don't i have my political opinions you have your political opinions and everybody um i think there's a particular valence when we watch films that gets filtered through that and i think that's good i think that's the point of movies and a point of art is that you're supposed to see what you see when you get it and so I think if you watch this film with your political with connecting it a little bit to the recent politics and the politics of quote-unquote social unrest uh, throughout the history because this was made in the 80s right but I think the, the dynamics of that don't really change so if you watch it with that in mind you as yourself can learn a little bit about what you think about politics in regards to this issue so the director obviously has his perspective, I as my perspective as a reviewer, which I've kind of spoken a little bit about, but you as a viewer will also get your perspective when you watch it. And the final point about this movie is that it's part of the Hong Kong New Wave movement, and it's one of the early films. So as a viewing experience, I think it's really interesting to see you know, how the techniques of the Hong Kong New Wave kind of began. And this film is an interesting kind of case study in the kind of run and gun DIY um, fastly produced, uh, quick pace kind of filmmaking style of Hong Kong that developed into other works like uh, John Woo's style or, um, or even Wong Kar Wai, even though the themes are very different, or Fruit Chan's kind of movies. All these uh, Hong Kong New Wave films, this is one of, the, one of the first ones. And you can see, if not the influence, um, you can see the beginnings of the way that Hong Kong filmmakers worked with their technical limitations because they didn't have as much money as Hollywood, but they were able to create these really exciting films through this type of style, which would be like handheld, fast paced, quick, you know, a lot of cuts, uh, stories and scripts that went, that go, kind of go all over. I think that's uh, something that people don't often talk about. Maybe they do, I don't know. Uh, but something that I always notice with Hong Kong films is that the script is not traditional in a way and it kind of takes it all these different places. There's all these plots, a lot of characters, subplots, things happening. The, the story moves all around, you know. 
So there's lots of short scenes that go all over the place and all these things happen. So I think it's a good film to watch if you're interested in Hong Kong New Wave. It's just one of the earlier ones. You can really get a sense of, um, of what the movement is about. And I actually definitely think that when you're watching movies from particular film movements, obviously you should watch the big ones. So like Chunking Express, if it was Hong Kong New Wave. But watching the early films of a filmmaking movement can also help you see, oh, this is the beginnings of this, Why, like the characteristics of it. So with this film, as it, it, you can really see that. Like if it was Taiwan, uh, Second New Wave, you know, if you watch something like The Sandwich Man, uh, you can see the beginnings of what the, what the characteristics of the movement are in a more raw form. Uh, if you like this review, please give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel. Uh, let me know what other film you want us to review. We review movies from everywhere in Asia. You know, I like to, you know, typically stick with movies from Taiwan, but there's a lot of great films from Hong Kong, from China, from Japan, from Korea, and we do those. We also do a couple Western films, so basically anything's fair game. Tell us what you want to review, and uh, I'll watch the film. We'll review it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.